In this video, we will study calculations related to Treasury bond futures. These are reasonably complex calculations involving multiple different steps. As an example, we will look at a problem similar to a problem out of the excellent text Derivatives by John Hall. It is July 30th of 2023. The cheapest to deliver bond in a September 2023 Treasury bond futures contract is a 4% coupon bond and delivery is expected to be made on September 30th of 2023. Coupon payments on the bond are made on February 4th and August 4th each year. The term structure is assumed to be flat, which isn't realistic, but makes the calculation simpler, and the rate of interest with semi-annual compounding is 5% per year. The conversion factor for the bond is 0 0.7751. The current quoted bond price is $99.02. Calculate the quoted future price for the contract. So our coupon rate is 4%. Our coupon payment, assuming a $100 face value bond, is then 4% times 100 divided by 2, our $2. Uh, the time to the next coupon payment is going to be five days. That's the time period between July 30th and the next coupon payment, which will be on August 4th, which is five days. The time to delivery of the bond is 62 days. That would be the time between July 30th and September 30th, two months. And you can add up those days on a calendar and get 62. Or you can use this excellent timeanddate.com site, which will calculate the number of days for you. Our yield curve is flat with 5% semi-annual compounding, and we will convert that later on to its equivalent in continuous compounding with two compounding periods per year. Our bonds are all converted for the purpose of a treasury bond futures contract to the equivalent of a 6% bond. Our bond is a 4% compound bond, our 4% interest bond, so our conversion factor will be less than one. You can get these conversion factors from a table like this from CME Group. So we are using the example of a 20-year bond with a 4% interest rate. So we have a 4% coupon, and the bond was issued on November 30th and expires on November 15th of the year 42. And we can get the conversion factor right here for a September 2023 delivery. And here are conversion factors for other deliveries and other bonds. The quoted bond price is 99.02, slightly below the $100 par, since the yield curve of 5% is above the coupon rate of 4%. Now we will convert our yield curve of 5% flat to a continuous compounding rate. Using continuous compounding makes a lot of these calculations much easier. So to do this, we will re-derive the conversion formula, um, converting from quantized rates to continuous rates is very similar as in converting from miles to kilograms. The future value has to be the same as a function of present value, no matter what interest rate you use. So we would say future value equals present value, and if you use continuous compounding, it's going to be 1 over the continuously quoted interest rate divided by the number of compounding periods to the number of years. If you use continuous compounding, it's going to be present value times the exponent of the continuous rate times the number of years. So we can take the T off each side, and we can divide both sides by PV. And then you just take the log of this to solve for RC, and we get RC equals N natural log of 1 plus the continuous compounded rate over N. So 2 is our number of compounding periods. Our quoted interest rate is 5% with two compounding periods. 
so we end up with 2 log of 1.025, and our continuous rate is 4.938%. The continuous rate will always be less than the quantized rate if you have more than one compounding period. Okay, so our next step is we will want to figure out what is the present value of the next coupon payment. I'm going to do this because we will be using this formula right here to get the cash futures price of the bond, and that's going to equal the spot future price of the bond minus the present value of interest, and then we want the future value of that. So what's the present value of the next interest payment? Two dollars exponent minus the continuous compounding rate we just calculated times how long until we get that payment. That's five days, so five over 365. So the present value of the interest payment that will be made in five days is $1.9986. So just slightly under the $2 payment. The cash price of the bond is going to be the quoted price of the bond of 99.02 plus accrued interest, that's the 99.02, and then the accrued interest today, well, the payment is made in five days, and again, we can figure out the number of days between interest payments using this time date function here. So the last interest payment, if it's July 30th, the last interest payment was made on the last February 4th, and the time between February 4th and July 30th is 177 out of the 182 days in that time period. Generally, the half of the year with February has slightly less than half of the 365 days, in this case 182. So most of the interest has been accumulated. And we take 99.02 plus 177 divided by 182 times 2. And we get the cash price of the bond right now is $100.97. So the cash futures price of the bond will be the cash price of the bond here minus the I right here, which is the present value of the next interest payment. That gets us this number right here, but then we need the future value of that on the day of expiration of the contract. So this would be our interest rate here, and the number of days until that contract expires. The delivery of the bond is 62 days, so we end up with $99.80. So that's the cash futures price of the bond. The quoted future price of the bond will equal that cash price minus the accrued interest. So we have the cash price here. Which accrued interest are we talking about? Well, that would be the accrued interest on the day of delivery of the bond. So the day of delivery of the bond is September 30th. How much interest will there be by September 30th? Well, August 4th was the last interest payment. And the number of days between August 4th and September 30th is slightly under two months. And again, we can go right here to figure out what it is exactly. It's 57 days. And this next time period, going from August 4th to the next year, has 184 days. So we have 2 times 57 over 184. Again, getting that from the time date function. So we get the interest accrued by then will be 62 cents. The quoted price in the 4% bond is 99.80 minus 62, or 99.18. To get the quoted future price, we take that 99.18 divided by our conversion factor, which is 0.7751, and we get $127.96. If you want to read more on these topics, there's also a good discussion at Investopia on bond futures, and I thank you for watching this video.